Hey there, if you've been wondering if it's really necessary to water bath all your jams and fruits and preserves, then this video is really for you. I have been making jams and preserves for over 30 years and I have never, and I probably never will, use the water bath canning method. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my background, I'm going to talk about my process, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the science. If you're new here on my channel, my name is Anya, and I love sharing our urban homesteading journey with you and how I make jams and canned fruits without ever using a water bath canner. First things first, if you're watching this video, I am encouraging you to check out all the links that I'm leaving in the box below this video and to do your own research. Ultimately, it is all about up to what you are comfortable with, what you think works best for you and your family. And again, do your own research, um, dig into the science and then determine the risks versus the benefits. That is what I have done and this is what I'm trying to share in this video. So I've been making jams for over 30 years and I do it just like my grandmother has always done and my mom has always done and I've been observing how they did it and so naturally I just picked it up and this is my process. I take out my jars and I sterilize them either in boiling water for 10 minutes or in a hot oven at like 220, 250 degrees. And then I boil my jam, I add sugar to it and sometimes I add lemon juice or citric acid to it both for taste but also for its benefits which I'm going to talk to about in just a moment. And then I fill my hot jars with the hot jam and leave just about maybe a quarter of an inch at the very top. I put on my lid and I invert my jars for about five minutes. And after five minutes, I put my jars back like this. This is, by the way, a jam that I made just last night. Uh, so I haven't even had a chance to put a label on it, but this is an elderberry blackberry jam. And then I store my jams. I make sure that I have a good seal. I love when I'm hearing this little sound. Burp, burp, and then I know that it has created a vacuum. So this is essentially the method that I've been using for 30 years. As I said, my grandmother has used it and my mom has used it. And pretty much everybody I know, um, I have a good friend and they don't get into this big fruit canning and jam making session. They just buy some fruit when it's um, on sale at the farmer's market. And then just kind of like while they're making dinner, they um, make a few cans or a few jars of jam and then they continue that process throughout the whole summer. Also, if you don't know this about me, I grew up in Germany and I haven't really seen anybody use the water bath canning method. So once I learned that in this country, it is common practice and actually recommended by the FDA and USDA, I went to a farmer's market in Germany and asked a commercial jam seller there and I said, have you ever water bath canned? And he almost looked at me like, what? <laughs> so this guy had been making jams commercially for decades and hasn't used this method. So I think it is somewhat particular to this country rather than other European countries or I hear New Zealand um, doesn't typically water bath can either. I'm leaving the link to a popular website that lists a whole bunch of recipes. It's a brand. They make all sorts of baking products, but they also have a lot of recipes online and it is in German. <laughs> but if you know German, you might find this interesting. And um, in preparation for this video, I checked their website and there's no mention of water bath canning whatsoever. I also, just for the fun of it, went and checked my old cookbooks. Now, this is a reprint of the 1896 Fanny Farmer cookbook, 
and all they talk about is, let me find the section here, how you boil the jams and then essentially you put them in stone jars or tumblers and store them. So that recipe is probably rudimentary and basic enough that they wouldn't mention anything else, but it is interesting that um, they don't seem to be concerned with anything else. And then I checked a few of my antique, and this one really is an old German cookbook. And they actually uh, talk about when they're talking about preserving and canning, they talk about putting a piece of paper and wax on top and not even something like a metal lid and band. So no mention of that there either, but they're adding a bunch of sugar. So now if you're wondering, why does this lady not water bath can when that is actually recommended and i'll repeat it by the fda and the usda here is the science as i understand it i am leaving links in the box below this video that you can check out educate yourself and then draw your own conclusions so the first reason why i don't think so so the main concern about um canning and preserving is the growth of an organism called botulism that can cause severe illness and in some cases even death. However, in 2017, the CDC only reported some 183 cases of botulism versus the 1.35 million yearly cases of salmonella. So it actually is a really rare disease and occurrence. Now, when you're preserving fruits, and this is only for fruit, this is not for um, meat or beans or something that contains protein, because the way I understand it is that protein can also um, contribute to the growth of botulism, but typically fruits don't have any protein at all. Also, fruits tend to have a much lower pH. Um, 4.5 is considered a safe pH for canning and it completely inhibits the growth of the botulism organism. And that's why I sometimes like to add lemon juice or citric acid to lower acid fruits like blueberries and because I think it makes the taste a little bit more interesting, but it also helps lower the pH. So if you would like to be on the safe side. I think you can actually, when you preserve a jam and you take it out and want to open it, and first of all, you make sure that you have a good seal um, and that the lid doesn't um, come off easily. And then you could take a little bit out on a spoon and test it with a pH strip. I wouldn't insert the strip into the whole jam because I think there might be some chemicals on it, but you could take some out and test it. If the pH is about 4.5 or lower, then I think you're good to go. Then you're adding sugar, and while there's a lot of controversy over sugar and its health benefits or detriments, I think it is a fine ingredient. I always lose organic sugar in preserving because sugar really inhibits the growth of any microorganisms or botulism. And again, I'm linking a study below that explains exactly how and why sugar does it. So does, by the way, salt and vinegar and um, curing, but we're not talking about that. We're only talking about canning fruits and jams. So that's essentially it. Again, please do your own research use the links that I send you, educate yourself, and then figure out if the preparation of jams without water bath canning is worth the risk. Like I said, I've done it for over 30 years. Everybody that I know growing up in Germany did it this way. And it's just, um, if you feel better about it and would like to add that extra step, by all means, please do that because it is a safety measure that otherwise you don't get it. However, I feel very comfortable for me and my family and I'm just gonna continue it. And if you have anything to add, any kind comments, I would love to hear them in below this video. And I always love to engage with my viewers and see what they have to say or have to add anything to this video, to this content that 
also helps me learn more and helps you too so we can all learn from one another and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next tuesday